गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ऑनलाइन क्लास ऑफ ट्वेल्थ केमिस्ट्री द चैप्टर विच वी आर स्टडिंग टूडे इज सोल्यूशन द टॉपिक विच वी हैव टू सी इज कॉलीगेटिव प्रॉपर्टीज दैट्स राइट वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी कॉलीगेटिव प्रॉपर्टीज वट दीज प्रॉपर्टीज आर लेट एस अंडरस्टैंड द प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ द सोल्यूशन विच डिपेंड ऑन द नंबर ऑफ सोल्यूट पार्टिकल्स इन रिस्पेक्टिव ऑफ देर नेचर will be called colligative properties colligative properties are those properties of the solutions which depend only on the number of particles present in the solution irrespective of the nature irrespective of the nature of the solute particles see there are certain colligative properties in, in our syllabus the first is relative loading of vapor pressure second is elevation of boiling point third is depression of freezing point and fourth osmotic pressure colligative property let's go through the colligative properties once more colligative properties are those properties which depend only on the number of solute particles how many solute particles are present in the solution it does not matter whether they are sugar or they are some other particles now let's see this diagram in this diagram it is a teacher and he is asking his student to have patience and try to evaporate because he knows that these four are non volatile solutes and they will not let his student evaporate because they will lower his student vapor pressure as we are already aware when a non volatile solute is added into a solvent the vapor pressure of the solvent gets decreased okay so let's move to the next slide it is about the first colligative property relative lowering of vapor pressure that's right relative lowering of vapor pressure we already know what vapor pressure means let us assume p not b the vapor pressure of pure solvent and p is the vapor pressure of solvent so lowering because lowering is taking place so obviously lowering of vapor pressure will become p not minus p but relative lowering of vapor pressure which may be defined as the ratio between lowering of vapor pressure and the vapor pressure of pure solvent so this will be relative lowering of vapor pressure and we already know raoult's law we studied it in the previous video and from this formula we can draw this formula see if one is subtracted from both sides so what do we get we get this formula and this means relative lowering of vapor pressure is equals to xb what is xb mole fraction of the non volatile solute yes mole fraction of the non volatile solute in that condition we have to see that relative lowering of vapor pressure is equals to mole fraction of a non volatile solute which is raoult's law for non volatile solute now you can see this picture this picture is showing some non volatile solutes in three different containers container a b and this one c see all are containing non volatile solutes of different colors this is having different color from the other the question is which sample has the lowest vapor pressure out of these three which sample has the lowest vapor pressure see answer is c the correct answer is c why so because c figure if you look at this figure carefully you will be observing that at in this figure there are more number of solute particles and they are non volatile let me remind you a non volatile solute particles will lower down the vapor pressure of the solvent okay let's move to the next it is elevation of boiling point or you may also say this is the second colligative property which we have to study see elevation of boiling point means boiling point is being increased 
So how it is being increased? Let us first understand what boiling point is. We studied in class 9 that boiling point is the temperature at which a liquid starts boiling. That's what we studied in class 9. Here it can also be stated as the temperature at which the vapor pressure of a liquid becomes equal to atmospheric pressure. That temperature will be called boiling point. Now let us represent boiling point of pure solvent by T naught P. Okay, boiling point of pure solvent is represented by T naught B and boiling point of solution is represented by Tb. As it is being increased, boiling point is being increased. So the increase in the boiling point would be equals to Tb minus T naught B. And this is equals to delta Tb. B represents boiling point. And it is known as elevation of boiling point. Delta Tb is known as elevation of boiling point, which is equals to Tb minus T naught B. Now experimentally it has been proved that delta Tb increase in the boiling point or elevation of boiling point is directly proportional to molality. And when we remove this symbol, proportionality symbol, so proportionality constant is introduced, which is Kb here. And Kb is known as molal elevation constant or ebullioscopic constant. Now we will understand this thing by looking at this figure. See, this y-axis is representing vapor pressure. And this axis, x-axis is representing temperature. See, at this temperature, this is origin, at this temperature, there is some vapor pressure of solvent. Similarly, there is some vapor pressure of solvent. But this temperature, we are not going to call boiling point of either solvent or solution because at this temperature, it does not become equals to one atmosphere. Now we have gone further and see at this temperature again, there is some vapor pressure of solution. And at the same temperature, there would be some vapor pressure of the solvent. But again, the vapor pressure is not equals to vapor pressure of or one atmosphere. But at this temperature, which is T naught B, at T naught B, see the vapor pressure of solution is this much but this is not equals to one atmosphere but at this temperature the vapor pressure of the pure solvent is equals to one atm and that is why t naught b will be called boiling point of solvent if we increase the temperature we see at tb vapor pressure of solution also becomes equals to one atm and that is the reason Tb is known as boiling point of solution. And as it can be seen from this figure, there is a difference between T naught B and Tb, which is delta Tb. And delta Tb is known as elevation of boiling point. Next is depression of freezing point. See depression of freezing point. What freezing point is? Freezing point is the temperature at which a liquid has the same vapor pressure as the vapor pressure of its frozen state. Let us assume T naught F be the freezing point of pure solvent. Pure solvent, freezing point of pure solvent is represented by T naught F. And Freezing point of solution has been represented by Tf. So the decrease in the freezing point would be equals to T naught, sorry, Tf minus T naught F. And delta Tf is depression of freezing point or decrease in the freezing point. Now again, experimental experiment showed that delta Tf or depression of freezing point is directly proportional to molality. And there is a constant which is introduced represented by Kf which is called molar depression constant or cryoscopic constant. Let's see 
this diagram this is vapor pressure line y axis and x axis there is temperature see at this temperature which is tf here the vapor pressure of the uh, solution is this much you can see it is this much and the pure solvent also have the same vapor pressure at tf so tf becomes freezing point of this solution if we look at liquid solvent see at this temperature there is some vapor pressure of liquid solvent but this vapor pressure is not equals to the vapor pressure of its frozen state if we keep on decreasing temperature it means we start moving in the direction of origin so we see there is a temperature which is represented by t not f at this temperature the vapor pressure of liquid solvent becomes this much and that's where this frozen solvent line is touching this liquid solvent line what does that mean it means the vapor pressure of frozen solvent at t not f is equals to the vapor pressure of its liquid solvent and that is the reason t not f becomes freezing point of solvent and the difference between them is depression of freezing point which is which is represented by delta tf let's move to the next slide it is osmosis see we have to see osmosis this is another property fourth colligative property osmosis is that phenomena which we generally see in our daily life there are several examples which i'll be giving you so what does osmosis mean see look at this figure in this figure it can be clearly seen that here we are yes that figure clearly shows that in this figure they are being there are two reason one reason is this and this reason contains certain particles and the other reason again contains particles or you may call it in this manner that there is two reason one is containing solution and the other is containing pure solvent or it can also be stated as that this container has been divided into two reason one reason is where there is lower concentration of solution the other is having higher concentration if we look at it in this manner so what do we observe we observe that salt molecule from this reason they will not move from this reason to this reason but the solvent molecules which are represented by these black bubbles they move from this reason to this reason through semi permeable membrane this is what we call osmosis let us understand the definition the spontaneous flow of solvent molecules through semi permeable membrane from a pure solvent to a solution or or from a dilute to a concentrated solutions see if we are having two solution let us understand this figure again we are having these two solution one is this which is which is having for instance lower concentration of solute that means higher concentration of water this one is having higher concentration of solute so lower concentration of water so clearly seen that water molecules before osmosis there were water molecules less in number but they are now more in number here why so because osmosis has taken place now see the example raw mango shrivel when pickled in brine brine means salt solution similarly blood cells collapse when suspended in saline water or you must have seen flowers they get revived when they are placed in fresh water mm -hmm. now look look into this figure in this figure it can be seen that again osmosis is taking place and if you look at this animated figure closely so what is being observed see water molecules the level keeps on decreasing the level on the left hand side keeps on decreasing and the level on the right hand side keeps on increasing 
and this membrane which is shown by this red dotted lines this is spm semi permeable membrane or it is also known as selectively permeable membrane because it allows some molecules to get through but it stops other from passing solvent molecules can go through it but solute molecules or bigger molecules will be stopped and it can be clearly depicted here this is the reason where pure solvent we are having pure solvent on the left region and on the right side there are there is a solution so from a region of higher concentration of solvent to a region of lower concentration of solvent through semi permeable membrane this movement what we call osmosis that's right let's move to the next slide it is osmotic pressure see when water molecules starts flowing from a region of higher concentration of water molecules to the region of lower concentration of water molecules so obviously they will be applying pressure and due to that pressure the level of water keeps on rising see if we apply pressure on the solution side so that the osmotic osmosis stops so the external pressure which is required will be called osmosis the definition is the external pressure which must be applied on the solution side in order to stop the flow of solvent into the solution through semi permeable membrane is known as osmotic pressure its formula is as we had seen in class 11 pv equals to nrt the same formula can be applied pi v equals to n to rt where pi is osmotic pressure see if you apply this formula molar mass of solute can also be calculated where m2 is the molar mass of the solute and pi is the osmotic pressure now look at this figure see this is the region of pure solvent and that's where the solution we are containing see from the region of higher concentration of solvent to the region of lower concentration of solvent there is a flow spontaneous flow through semi permeable membrane this is what we call osmosis so in water molecules or any solvent molecules start flowing from this region to this region so they will be applying some pressure and if we apply pressure here on the solution side so the external pressure which is more than the osmotic which is more than the atmospheric pressure which we needs to apply so that osmosis stops that is what we call osmotic pressure let's move to the next it is isotonic hypertonic and hypotonic solution what do they mean see if you are having two solutions and both are having same osmotic pressure it means when they are joined together through semi permeable membrane there is no osmosis there is no flow of solvent molecules for instance if we look at this figure see water molecules are coming in they are going out but there is no net flow either out or in these solutions are known as isotonic solutions i mean those solutions which are having same osmotic pressure at a given temperature we will be calling them isotonic solutions but if two solutions are not having same osmotic pressure then obviously one will be having higher osmotic pressure the other will be having lower osmotic pressure a solution of low osmotic pressure will be called hypotonic solution and the one which is having higher osmotic pressure we call it hypertonic let's see first hypertonic see this is hypertonic solution if you see this animated figure see it keeps on shrinking why so because water molecules go out from this and it shrinks on the other hand if you look at this hypotonic solution see this animated figure it keeps on swelling up why so because water comes in let's move to the another topic it is reverse osmosis reverse osmosis what does it mean see we were having two container which are which is separated by or we are having a container which is in which we separate fresh water from salt water by this spm which is semi permeable membrane and we are very well aware that water from fresh water to salt water there would be a flow through this spm which we call osmosis 
but if you want to stop this we have to apply certain pressure external pressure on the solution side which we call yes that's right osmotic pressure but what if we apply more pressure than osmotic pressure then the solvent molecule form solution side that's right solvent molecules from solution side will start moving from solution to yes pure solvent and this is reverse of that phenomena which we call osmosis and that is why we call it reverse osmosis so whenever external pressure greater than osmotic pressure is applied on the solution which is separated from pure solvent by semi permeable membrane spm means semi permeable membrane the solvent starts flowing from solution to pure solvent this process is called reverse osmosis do we have any use of this reverse osmosis let's see application it is used in desalination of sea water for getting fresh drinking water ro means reverse osmosis and see a type of ro reverse osmosis has been shown here from where we convert water into fresh drinking water let's see abnormal molar mass abnormal what does it mean abnormal abnormal molar mass is the mass which we get which is not the true mass it is either higher or lower than what we expect from normal value we call it abnormal molar mass and the colligative properties which is obtained due to this abnormal molar mass we call it abnormal colligative properties but when do we get abnormal molar mass and why do we get it see so far the solutions we have seen those solutions contain solute which are non volatile i mean they are not going to dissociate or associate in the solution but if we come across those solutes solutes which either associate or dissociate in solvent or you may call it solution in that condition the number of particles may get changed see colligative properties depend only on the number of solute particles so when the number of solute particles change in the solution the colligative properties shall change accordingly and von thorpe the was the scientist who made correction in the previous formula obviously those colligative properties will either relative lowering of vapor pressure or osmotic pressure or depression of freezing point or elevation of boiling point if you look into those properties we saw some formula in the slides previous slides so those formula will no longer hold so how to hold them properly in any question especially in those questions where association or dissociation takes place von thorpe introduced a factor which is represented by this i small i and it is equals to normal molar mass upon abnormal molar mass he says if you apply this i then you can calculate you can use the same formula which we used earlier and we can get the correct answer one more formula is observed colligative property divided by calculated colligative property and the third is total number of moles of particles after association or dissociation divided by number of moles of particles before association or dissociation so this is how we can calculate the value of von thorpe factor which is also known as which is represented by i if association takes place i is less than 1 if dissociation takes place it is more than 1 no association or dissociation then i is equals to 1 see the modified fo form of those colligative property formula now see the same formula is applied by but i is introduced similarly boiling point elevation i is introduced and i is introduced in some other formula if no association or dissociation you can keep the value of i you can put the value of i here 1 and this is how we get the formula which we previously saw that's it for today we wind up here but i leave you though with a beautiful animation of osmosis <laughs> that osmosis animated video it's very important to see very funny actually let's see